Welcome everyone to Wrestling Is Cool. According to The Rock, wrestling is indeed yes. cool, baby. We're back. Wrestling is cool, the coolest wrestling podcast on the planet. Diarrhea Sancho, how you doing, bud? I hate you. I hate you for all that you believe in. That's I, I am so annoyed. Like, I okay, look. I'm trying not to be the biggest wet blanket about some things because, you know, wrestling is wrestling. And sometimes it just you got to be like, hey, man, we're in this era. It's PG-13. But when you have The Rock come off of what he just did and then you follow up, your faces go, oh, your diarrhea, Dwayne, and you be a big poopy in your pants. I'm like, <laughs> what is <laughs> What's happening, you know? Uh, it was such a juxtaposition from The Rock's conversation about wrestling being cool. And yes. then that to me was a flashback to, and, and this is coming from the Cena mark, from the like annoyingly PG trying to be yes. edgy, but can't be edgy because they're PG Cena promos from late 2010, uh, from uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. It was bad. I did not like Diarrhea Dwayne. And at the same time, it's who is delivering it. That's the problem. And you just stumbled upon what I wanted to say real quick. Folks out there, and you could go ahead and groan. You could go ahead and write this in the comments. It should be L.A. Knight in that main event alongside Cody Rhodes. It should be Cody Rhodes and L.A. Knight versus Roman and The Rock. Seth Rollins is already busy with a main event with Drew McIntyre. Why do we have to eat up so much of the card for Seth? Give L.A. Knight a chance. Give the man the ball. L.A. Knight could have said Dwayne, and I can't even say that. And it would be funnier than when Seth said it. Thank you very much. Your honor, I rest. That is the LA Knight glaze of the episode. Enjoy it while it lasts. Thank you, your honor. <clears throat> no, dude, you would honestly, you would have stuck your head in the sand if oh, no. LA Knight had said no. diarrhea, Dwayne. You would have been, no, 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 you would have been, you, yeah, I, I'm a diarrhea mark. I'm here, Sancho, <laughs> the biggest <laughs> diarrhea glazer of all time. No, come on. You would have been so embarrassed no, if LA no, Knight said that. You would be like, The Rock, you have basically have IBS. Yeah. <laughs> You're your Crohn's disease. Yeah. I can only say that because I kind of suffer that. I'm just saying, dude. Seth Rollins fumbled the bag. He just fumbled it so badly. I, I, it bothers me. And I'm sorry. I know we're jumping the gun because we're going to talk about Bloodline all yeah. episode here. But that was just bizarre. It felt like I, I went into a, a multiverse or a time loop or, you know, like moment in the Matrix. Like, wait a minute. What happened? We're, we're, wait, wait, what is this? This is not Triple H. This is what era are we in all of a sudden? No, it was a... Um... It was a suckering succotash moment. Worse. You think Definitely it was? Worse. No, it's not worse than suckering it succotash. Was, it was no worse. way, dude. Suckering. You have to remember suckering succotash. He said it, turned to the camera, and winked. Like, I, come I, on, I, dude. I dude no, that. you can't beat suckering I succotash. I will take that. I will take that a hundred times over because when you come off the rock, literally threatening your livelihood, saying he could snap away your belt, he could take everything away from you, and that is the best thing you have. Seth Rollins should not try to be uh, Fruity Pebbles, John Cena, as The Rock would say. Should not be that kind of, of promo. He should be a workhorse promo. He should cut promos like he did against CM Punk. It just tells me that he does not genuinely hate Dwayne as much as he hates Phil. You know what I mean? Yeah. He really dislikes CM Punk, and you could tell. Like, I believe that. I don't believe him in this in this promo, and that's why it should be... <clears throat> I think you make a, a really great point, though, about how how much deeper cutting the CM Punk related promos are it's compared cut. to this. It's deep. Yeah, here it, it seems very surface level. And I like the motivation that he's got. Uh, it's there. Yeah, but I, I don't know, man. I feel like he for for the CM Punk stuff, I don't feel like he's writing anything. I feel like he's just going out there and just talking his visceral gut reaction about how much he doesn't like CM Punk. Well, with this uh, suckering succotash like promo, I feel like he had to go write it down. I'm like, oh, wow, I need to come up with something funny here because maybe you're right. Maybe he just yeah, he doesn't have this genuine disdain for for Dwayne. And at the same time. I think the biggest misstep between Cody and Seth is they were harping on the fact that it was a 20-minute promo on Instagram and Twitter, and they were making fun of him for that. But they forgot what was actually said in that promo. There were some, like, legit blurred lines that The Rock, I think, genuinely feels upset that Roman and Rock is not happening at Mania as planned. It was supposed to be the biggest draw in a, forever mm -hmm. for the Rock and Roman. They've been working on it forever, and for it to be 
usurped by the Cody Crybabies, as The Rock said. And he said some heinous things in there and that only The Rock can get away with. And then he did it again on Friday night in Glendale. Like, th that's what blows my mind. It's like they had an opportunity to stand up for themselves. And I think they focused on the wrong things. Seth should have focused on, you can't take away this belt. This belt is me. I'm the workhorse. And Cody should have should have really addressed The Rock saying what he said at the very end of his promo on the Instagram. Dude, I'm 100% with you. We'll get to that rock promo in just a second. But everyone, welcome to Wrestling Is Cool. If you're listening to this on YouTube, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever it is that you are, thank you. Just know that you could be listening to this episode three days earlier than everyone else. We filmed this right after Monday Night Raw, so it would have been nice and fresh. You know, we're, we're literally talking about the, the Diary of Dwayne stuff uh, 12 hours after, after it's happened. So you could have gotten this a lot earlier over on Patreon. Patreon.com com slash Santi Zab, uh, where you're going to get this episode three days early. You're going to get wrestling is cool gaming as well. We're going to be playing some 2K content on there very soon. Oh, yeah, we're also giving you the raw reviews, the SmackDown reviews and so much more. Nearly 500 of you are already supporting there. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, just go check it out. There might be something that you like there. And we're moving up the up the charts, Sacho, taking over the audio services. We were like it, the the in the top 20 of of wrestling podcasts for apple Podcasts. what's cool is like i've got the metrics for it every month more and more listeners every month little by little wrestling is cool is knocking at the door of mr the mr handsome himself chris van vliet and we're like one podcast below dutch mantel dude we're <laughs> ahead of like some like legit wrestling legends by the way like ahead of their podcast and i want to ask you what do yes. you think that what like what do you think that is? Um obviously like I've got I've got a platform it's helping with the popularity of the podcast. Yes. Um but there's I was looking at that list of podcasts and there's just very little if any fan run podcasts. It is a lot of former wrestlers, dirt sheet people, news people. What, 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 are we are we creating a movement here? Some some fan generated wrestling content starting to take over. Uh, I would definitely give you credit to your platform. I think the biggest thing as well is the community. I think it it shows us there is a need in this space for fan driven content. It is evident in any type of medium that you see currently. Sports related content has now shifted from ESPN to content to user generated content, especially with the edits and things like that you see on TikTok. I think it's just more of the fans themselves want to find like minded people in a sense of like what makes wrestling great is this disparity of opinions, the friendliness and the civil the civility that you can have as well of differences of oh I like this wrestler I don't like this wrestler and at the same time the message that we have here wrestling is cool is that we are a community of the we are the I, <laughs> I had this term in my mind we are we vouch for the vouchless when it comes <laughs> down to this <laughs> when it comes down to hey, so it's a young it's a young slang out there you know the millennials know what I'm talking about we vouch for the vouchless where we people don't have an outlet for wrestling even me in my day to day, and we talk about this all the time, I don't have an outlet for wrestling unless it's the community that I interact with, unless it's the watch parties that I have, unless it's your watch parties, unless it's the TikTok content, unless it's the podcast. I don't have that. And at the same time, I love and respect all those former wrestlers getting the insight, the Jim Cornettes of the world. But even then, that feels like a step removed from what we're experiencing on the ground floor as fans. And I don't want to ever lose that identity that we have here at Wrestling is Cool. And I want it to be uh, for everyone. And like I said, I know I'm the number one LA Night Glazer. And there's some of y'all that don't agree. And that's cool. And we're all cool. We're all cool people. But to answer your question in short, it's because we vouch for the vouch list, my friend. Yeah, I think um, there is a... I, I do believe that wrestler-led podcasts are starting to become oversaturated. I think I like I think every wrestler at this point that's retired has a podcast and to some degree I do believe that there's oversaturation in that side of things mm -hmm. um but also you know as much as I do appreciate wrestler led podcast there like you said there's a degree of separation where I don't think a, a listener can fully relate to their thoughts and opinions because they're such 
expert opinions. They are from a point of experience that most people will never have. And I think you and I and other fan uh, run podcasts that are starting to take off, uh, we are we're on the couch with everyone. We're seeing the same thing that everyone is seeing. We are reacting to the same conversation that everyone is having from the same pedestal, from the same point of view. We don't have this step up on somebody where we have extra information, where we're insiders, different type of experience, like being in the wrestling ring or, or, or working for the business. This real, we're, we're grassroots conversations. And I think that that's yeah. resonating with people because we, to some degree, do represent what everyone else is thinking or the conversations that everyone else wants to have that they can't have because they don't have that wrestling outlet. So wrestling is cool, dude. It's taking over slowly. Yeah. And don't forget, Sancho Mania is taking over. I appreciate all the people in the comments down below saying Sancho Mania is here. Yes, all seven. All, all, all seven people. All, 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 all your no. alt accounts, too. No. You, 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 don't talk to me about alt accounts, Mr. TikTok. You have like <laughs> 10, 20. What are you, on 30? Who? How many times are going to shut up? And, and by the way, Santi is not in the comments in the wrestling school. I am. That's right. Me, baby. I'm on the ground, ground, ground This guy's floor, politicking. Right? I'm out there shaking hands, <laughs> kissing babies. I'm out there trying to win you over because I can't win you over with my hot takes. I got to win you over with my love. You know what I mean? <laughs> got to give you that that Latin heat out there. Sancho, I've got some news. Yes. I've got some some life-changing news. You got, That's some, bad, you got some bad news? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I got some bad, got some bad news. news. Sancho, what's yes? been the thing that you've been holding over my head as a wrestling fan over the last oh, couple of months. No, tell, no just, uh, just tell, tell the, tell the no. world. What is that one thing that you've been holding no. over my head? Uh, I hate you. Tell I me. I genuinely do. That's the one thing I had over you. What is Ladies it? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for the longest time, the number one Cena glazer, the man that glazes the organic glaze for John Cena on a nightly basis. <sighs> Was always a, a flag bearer for John Cena, loved John Cena, would clean the cape off of John Cena's back, would clean that golden shovel, was always looking for a follow for John Cena on X. And I'm assuming you finally got the John Cena rub. A rub a dub dub, you got the follow on X. Is that what is that what it is? It is, sir. I got oh, myself yeah. that follow on X, and I think it's because I was spamming his Ricky Stanicky OF with please follow me on Twitter. And I think it may have worked <laughs> because Jeez. it was after I followed his Ricky Stanicky OF and I started leaving comments on his videos. Then all of a sudden I refreshed Twitter and there he is, Ricky Stanicky in the flesh. You Look, sold out. Dude. You sold out, <laughs> dude. It, 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 I guess it just helped to be a, an, an OF pay pig just to be like, please, please, you baby. Whale. Honey, please, just please follow me. That's all I want. That's all I want. <laughs> like, yeah, you're one of those stalkers, dude. Well, congratulations. How did you feel now that you have John Cena who follows a million other accounts? No, don't don't belittle this. No, don't. wait, no, wait. Let me finish. I get, I'll let you have your moment of sun in a second. He followed me because I'm a Fortnite guy, all right? Mm -hmm. And he saw that I need to follow this guy because he would rock my John Cena outfit. You are just a guy that just enjoys his Ricky Stanicky promo. You saw no. him out. No, man, I'm the, Rick, the Ricky Stanicky uh, angle is my Trojan horse. I'm in now. Sold out. I'm in, and now I get to to truly glaze him. Dude, I'm going to be sending him DMs every day. I'm going to be giving him updates on, you know, on how I'm hustling, how I'm loyalty, and how I'm respecting. You know, all of these things. Now I have a direct line of contact with John Cena. But I'm two of the four ruthless aggression infinity stone follows oh, before wow. i completely take over i've got cena i've got orton adam copeland batista we're coming for you wow i'm impressed now i'm going to ask you a hard-hitting question okay and i'm going to ask the people in the comments as well who are listening to this i love john cena and i think john cena is a very interesting cat you know the guy has a mind that is very eastern he's very you know zen like at the same time do you feel that if you ask john a question do you think he's telling you what his legit answer is or he's just giving you like a philosophy question like answer i asked this because you know chris van vliet friend of the show 
says, hey, what's your you know favorite championship? And he has he says, my next one. And I'm like, come on, John. You, you, I, I respect that, John, and I know what you're trying to do, you're trying to motivate me. You're trying to, you know, hang in there, kitty cat me poster. I get it. You're trying to get me to hustle. But for real, John, what was your real? Like, I would go like, all right, John, but for real, what was your favorite championship? So I ask you this, Santi, what was your favorite John Cena championship run? Okay, couple of things. Your first question as to like, if I were to ask John Cena a question, would he give me a philosophical answer? I do. I do think so. I feel like that's right now his uh, Hollywood PR default um, yes. where he, he it's, I've seen him in like four or five podcasts and that's the way he's been. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of long winded non answers. Uh, like, for example, I remember Chris Van Vliet asking him, uh, like, are are you striving for the 17th title? It's a very simple question. It could be, right. no, I'm not striving for it, but if it happens, cool. Uh, yes, I am striving for it. That'd be great. But I mean, gr granted, he gave a really good answer, but it was a non-answer. He's just like, I can't focus on the things that I can't control. You know, I have no control over that, but it's a, it's yeah, but like, that's not what he asked. He asked like, do you want it? <laughs> you know, like you can want things that are- it's okay, John. Yeah, to, that things that are not in your reach, things that are, you don't have control. It's okay to want those things. It's okay to, to express that, but- yeah, it's it, he can be a weird cat in interviews uh, where it's, yeah, very long winded non answers, very politician esque, honestly, sometimes. And as a, as a Cena fan, sometimes I'm like, oh, come on, man. I'd love to I'd love to hear like the like you, you know, I've, I've seen him. In, have you seen him in, in Total Divas, Total Bellas? He's a complete oh, heel. He's he's a, he, he's bizarre yeah. on there. I want to see that John Cena. <laughs> I honestly don't even think that that is John Cena. I think he's playing up a character. You think I so? No, dude. I've never seen anyone be like, "You, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna wet the floor and gonna warp the floor <laughs> with that little puddle. You're gonna stain the marble." I don't really believe in those reality shows. I'm sorry if you would film me in my house and there's a camera right there. I'm not going to act like myself. There's just no way knowing Fair. that the world's gonna see that. But I don't know why John would play that. I mean, maybe that's his, like, I never got, I never got to turn heel. So I'm just going to be a heel on this show. <laughs> be my, a neurotic. And, or, yeah. Just being a, a weird dude about his marble. Man, isn't that crazy that John Cena proposed at Mania? Like, are yeah. we forgetting that? Yeah. And just like Cody Rhodes, he took it back. Uh, yeah. yeah. It took back his, uh, not the proposal. Cody Rhodes never took it back his proposal. I meant his, you know, word to the rock. And we're going to get that in just a second. Um, well, okay, answer the question though. What was your favorite? Yes. John I was, Cena I was trying to get back to that. My favorite John Cena title reign. If we're not, if we're including all of them, the, uh, U S open challenge that to me is, is far that. and away his, his best reign. No if ands or buts. If we're talking about his WWE championship reigns, Oh man, he has so many that were just so short and so quick. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm gonna go to the one where um, it's it's so short. It's so it's it's it's. A, I just like that they chose him to be the champion to pass the torch for CM Punk for the Summer of Punk. I think he mm -hmm. was the the perfect champion for that while still being a babyface, but also being the man, the physical manifestation of everything that CM Punk hated. Obviously, like in terms of matches and different feuds that he had, it, there's very few in that very few championship reigns that he had where he had multiple feuds because he would have a feud lose, win it back have a feud lose win it back so to say one particular championship reign it's really really difficult if anything you'd have to kind of think of a championship feud and i would say that his championship feud with randy orton was really good uh and his championship feud uh his championship feuds with uh cm punk were also great as well mm -hmm. they were just so many start stop individual reigns the only one that really felt like it had substance and teeth in uh in long-term backing was that u.s championship reign which is you know, back then, like that was the barometer of being a goat, winning as many titles as possible. But now that narrative has completely shifted to uh, how long you can you can hold the title for. And I think you can make cases for it and cases against it. Uh, I think that in terms of um, if you if you really actually care about solidifying these records in creating an actual goat of the business, then I do think that holding the title as long as possible is more reflective of that than winning as many times because that also means you lost that many times. Um, 
but also it just does mean for less interesting television from time to time. That's and to me, that's actually a greater sin than anything else. So I, I've been saying, yeah, I'm not saying we need to go back to the two month John Cena reigns, no, but I, I, I'd like a new champion from time to time. Sancho bloodline. We wanted to talk bloodline today. There's a lot going on. And just like WrestleMania, Bloodline is going to take up the portion, a good portion of wrestling is cool today, uh, leaving off a lot of people that we could be talking about, just like WrestleMania, likely leaving off a lot of people that should be on the show that are not going to be. Where do you want to start this? Because there's a lot of angles that we can take this. I was thinking maybe that 20 minute uh, Dwayne promo on Instagram. Um, yeah. Before I pass it over to you, one of the things that I'll... That, that I will say, you know, with uh, The Rock coming in, cutting this, yes, long, but very good, but also very important and very canon um, promo on Instagram that you absolutely must watch and listen to if you want to be up to date with the storyline. Um, I didn't like Cody and Seth's response of uh, too long, didn't read, LOL, and then following it up with Diarrhea Dwayne. Um, no disrespect to, to our listeners, but to me, that just sort of felt like the Gen Zer making fun of the millennial. Right. Making like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, too long winded millennial pause. Like, I don't want to. It just it felt childish. And the, what the rock lobbed up for them, this like really serious, real life feeling storyline really felt like they grounded it into into sillyism. I don't know. I know. I know, I know that's not a word, but it, it felt like they grounded it in. Not in realism, but in silliness with this suckering succotash like promo from Seth Rollins. It was a bad follow up. We took two steps back there, and it just shows you how high stakes this entire bloodline storyline is, where you're going to have to nail it every single time the bloodline appears on television or on socials to go back to The Rock promoting the business on his Instagram right front and center. Remember the, one of the, I think the most followed Instagram account in the world for an individual person to have a 21 minute wrestling business on that account just shows you how much, how important this is to him that he's willing to sacrifice his image, so to speak, to cut a very, very, I said probably top 10 promo of all time. And it's the kind of a promo that we should cherish because you can't do that on television. Unfortunately, a crowd cannot sit through that type of promo in real life, even though they sat through a 40 minute. I was going to say, what are you talking right, about? Right. They sat through something much longer. <laughs> but the, the I'm saying that promo was the foundation for this next step for the bloodline, like you mentioned. And I said this at the beginning of the podcast, but Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes, mainly Seth, just appeared weak. Like, they're not in the same ballpark as Roman and The Rock. And when you watch that SmackDown 40-minute segment, it doesn't feel like 40 minutes. You're sitting there glued. You're sitting there like, what's going to happen? There's so much here. There's even, like, little smacklings of Sami Zayn-esque humor when Rock says, that solo, that solo, he's happy right now. Look at him, he's yeah. happy. There's some good stuff in that whole entire thing, and it, it just feels... It makes me say this. Why do we want Cody to win so badly? When the bloodline could contribute to the business and the bloodline is feeding us so much, like literally feeding us. I doubt The Rock could commit to a year, and I know The Rock is a busy, busy guy, and he's going to start off with the football stuff soon. But why would you want Cody to win when the bloodline with The Rock is just on a whole other level. Like the different directions you can go with The Rock and Roman running the, the WWE for one more year is infinitely better than Cody Rhodes being Super Cody Champion. I know people don't want to hear it. I know people don't want to see it. But Monday kind of solidified that for me. I do think that you are suffering from what I am calling recency Stockholm syndrome because I agree with you no I agree with you right now with what we're getting from the bloodline it's so much better than what we're getting from the Seth Rollins Cody Rhodes side of things but the difference is that you are you me and so many people are mesmerized with what the bloodline is doing that we think 
we believe, we hope that it could stretch for a long time. And, but that requires them being there. So that's why I'm saying recency Stockholm syndrome, because they're there right now. They're there every week. So they're making us believe, oh my God, this is going to be like this every week is going to be so awesome every week. But after WrestleMania, you know that they're going to be gone for three, five months at a time. And they're just going to have to rely on Solo and Jimmy to be goons and get beat oh. up. And that's going to be lame. And then we're going to go know. back to we want Cody to finish the story. Right now, we have rose-tinted glasses because of how good The Rock and Roman feel, how big they feel. But don't forget the frustration that we all had as recently as a month and a half ago when Roman didn't participate on a single show from Crown Jewel all the way to the Royal Rumble, man. That's okay. the actual reality of the situation that we're in. So that's just me answering your question. Why would sure. we still want Cody to win that? Okay. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. But you, you ran over what I, my sign that I said that the bloodline storyline with the rock and Roman winning WrestleMania 40 could extend to different places that the bloodline storyline hasn't been before with the recent rumblings of signings and free agents and I don't want to get too far into it because it's not official yet. We're not that kind of a podcast where we speculate things like that based on who signed who and who's available. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't us. That ain't us. But there's a lot of bloodline wrestlers out there that could definitely go deeper. There's a lot of Cody Rhodes kind of legacy that could come back. Who knows what's available out there? I'm just saying, I don't know what the direction in a post WrestleMania 40 with the Cody win, what direction is that? Because you have to assume Cody's going to win. Seth's not going to have that belt. And Drew McIntyre is going to go on further being the champion. So we've got something there. We have to assume that Gunther is going to retain. And he's going to continue on his journey on that, on that front. The tag team titles are going to be split. So where does that leave the bloodline in a post world where they lost? Jimmy and Solo, what can they do? They're going to be, you know, pathless. Sami Zayn, which I think is the biggest missing piece through all this, is not around. And I wish Sami was not chasing the Intercontinental because his whole path of I need to be a winner and I need to, you know, be at Mania doesn't make sense. Well, he should be involved in the bloodline. I'm sorry. He's a part of he's a part of this story and he's just not there. And it just makes no sense to me that Sami's not involved in any kind of Mania Stipulation. And Jay. Main event Jay is still not doing it for me. I feel like he's just out there slinging merch and slinging heat. <laughs> he's doing a good know? job of it, though. He's, I mean, this yeah. man's... He's, he's, glasses. he's reminding he's got, me of like 2017 Logan Paul where everything was yeah. just about his merch on his videos because he, he's slinging merch and he's slinging he's, it pretty good. <laughs> and I, I would say this. It's like, I know I just, when I said Ellie Knight should be the one to be not Seth Rollins, but why is Seth Rollins in this feud? Should be Randy, reason, honestly. Like that, the real answer, it, it actually should be Randy. It, it should be somebody, not Seth Rollins, because like I said, Drew's is right in his sights. But that, I'm telling you, man, and if we, again, this is going to be a much more fluid conversation. I, I'm telling you, Seth Rollins is there to potentially turn on Cody, or at least to have us ask this question, is Seth going to do it? I mean, it's it just it just doesn't make any sense why Seth would be the one to step up for Cody. And I have receipts. Hello, Cody destroyed you at Mania. He embarrassed you at Mania. He came from AEW and beat you, the Golden Child of the WWE. He beat you with a torn peck and the Hell in the Cell. He humiliated you there too. You said in your promo on Monday Night Raw that you've been against the power of the storm. No, you haven't, Seth. You were a part of the authority. Are you crazy? Th th you're Triple H's boy. I just don't see it, man. I, every time I try to buy into the fact that Seth Rollins is trying to defend the company, the soul of the WWE against the absolute power of Roman Reigns, I'm like, that's not the Seth. What are you doing, dude? That That is I not... Uh 
he, that's not the Seth character. I'm I'm that's with not, you there. That's it, not the revolutionary, it, no visionary. You know whose no character that is, and I he's Sammy just Zane. not. He, that's Sami Zayn. The Sami yes. Zayn uh, fight fight oppression, fight the the people that are holding people down. That was his narrative with the Judgment Day. If you remember, a couple of months and ago, bloodline. and yep. Bloodline. Um, that that's what he was fighting for for a really really long time. And all of a sudden, it seems like they took that aspect of Sammy's character and gave it to Seth Rollins. But Seth Rollins has never been about that. Seth Rollins has always been about, ha, 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 this yeah, is me. I'm a, like, dude, even when when he was a babyface in a lot of these scenarios, like against Finn Balor, um, he was still acting the same, you know, pompous, annoying heel character. The only difference was that now he was facing other heels. So by de facto, he was the baby face and doing the same, the, the sing along chant and whatnot. But this, um, you know, man of, of, of the people trying to stop the power from taking over. When has that ever been Seth Rollins? It Never. is a little bit out of character for him. So when I hear you say that it does make me wonder, yeah, maybe Seth Rollins is a snake in the grass. Maybe when Seth Rollins was talking to Cody Rhodes on the most recent episode of SmackDown and and went to point at him, but did an L. I don't know if, if it was intentional or maybe that was signifying that he's oh, aligned wrong, with yeah. The Rock. Um, look, this is this L thing right now. It's like the Call of Duty Mason. What do the numbers mean? What does the L mean? Because clearly, clearly, to some degree, they're doing it on purpose. Seth obviously did that on purpose. And The Rock started off with a one, switched to an L, and then back to a one in the most recent episode of SmackDown. Sancho, what does the L mean? What is I, it? I, all I know, keep it up, because you know those views are doing really good for me when I talk about Double Agent Rock. I, <laughs> well, let's talk about that right now. Sure. Double Agent Rock is is that a thing? The only the only thing that I would see that happening is to save the image of the Rock and for the Rock to be like, I'm the hero all along in this story. Like it was my plan. I'm the one that hatched this diabolical scheme to get to Cody to finish the story for, you know, our fathers, yada, yada, yada. And I think that's an interesting narrative. I think those are the people that don't want to see The Rock as a heel, but I don't buy it. I don't see The Rock turning on family. The Rock, I think he truly does believe that family means a lot to him. I mean, you do Fast and the Furious and all of a sudden that rubs off you, you know, you're out there <laughs> talking about family like Vin Diesel. I don't see him doing that to disrespect the bloodline in, in, in his heritage over what the, I guess, the disrespect that Roman did for stopping him. Because that moment was, I've never seen The Rock get interrupted if you smell the, I'm trying to even think, did mankind interrupt him? Maybe? Maybe. I think, Dude, the, I think the only people, I think, I think mankind has, I think the only people that have gotten away with it are Stone Cold and Mankind. Right, and not even John Cena, because I was thinking like, I, I for, for some reason nope. in the, like in the back of my mind, like you, you know the you know how PlayStation Two they had the little cubes, oh yeah, memory yeah, yeah. For all the game. <laughs> There's one little one, and it's the Rock and Sock connection, and I just remember Socko interrupting him and saying, "What Socko is cooking? I don't know if it's real, <laughs> but it's in there." But that moment to me could be like maybe the canary in the coal mine that the rock can turn on him for Roman disrespecting him. Maybe. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that I think even with the rock being, you know, obviously so proud family heritage and whatnot, I, I hear what you're saying with him, maybe in real life, not wanting to turn on Roman to protect the sanctity of like the bloodline um, family tree. The PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The Steve job, Jack, Steve jobs, PowerPoint. Um, by the way, Take a I look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a great meme. Um, however, I do think that it could be done in that exact same way where he turns on Roman, but as a way to give Roman the ability to be babyface, not for Rock to be the hero, but for Rock to become an even bigger bad guy where the Rock all of a sudden, he actually is the secret boss in all of this. He is the final boss and the only person that can take him out is is Roman Reigns at next year's WrestleMania, setting up this dream match that The Rock keeps spewing about, The Rock versus Roman Reigns, but this time is Roman as a babyface, allow, allowing you know a member of his family to use The Rock as that stepping stone to, to, to put over a member of his family. I could see him doing it for that. And hear me out, the oh. WIC. Oh God, hear what? Me out, oh no, I hate when things start with hear me out. It's another Sancho hot take, all right? 
Someone, someone in the comments said Sancho has Vince Russo booking. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you got it right. You got it right about that. The Rock. You talking about how can we make The Rock the secret boss? Hear me out. All of a sudden, Cody wins at, at night two. Adrenaline in my soul. Damien Priest music hits. Out comes Senor Money in the Bank, right? Cody's tired. Damian Priest. Then they jump Cody, right? The Judgment Day beat him up. And you think, oh my God, Damian's going to cash in. And he hands the briefcase over to The Rock. And The Rock cashes in. And he becomes the undisputed, the multiverse WWE. The Rock doesn't even know what the title is anymore. What's it called? Champion. Woo! Now we're talking about mega heel. Oh my God. You would leave the Philadelphia WrestleMania so upset. Yeah. The Rock reigns for a whole year and he's not even on TV. You don't even see the championship. Oh my God. I mean, that's kind of fire, but that's that's burying kind of uh, Damian Priest for sure. No, and, no. You don't think Damian so? P he would become a heel because he cut the deal with the devil. And, and, and look, I'd be okay him, with it. And, and then it, The Rock gives him an intercontinental champion because he snapped his fingers. He no, I would, I would say, I would say, give him the world title to really call back to the oh, yeah, to awesome. that promo, right? Like I could just strip Seth Rollins that'd, at any moment. That'd be sick. F oh, okay, yeah. Vince Russo. Okay, you know what? Vince Russo booking here kind of has me a little bit intrigued. Yeah. I don't, I don't entirely hate this. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Sancho uh, didn't uh, didn't provide garbage yeah. there. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that comment. I, I on the spot, legit hit me right now, dude. I'm stroke of lightning. So Rock being a double agent, I do think it's it's a I think it's a very high likelihood in some capacity. The only I think the only unknown for me is once it's revealed that he's a double agent, where is he landing on the side of morality? Is he a double agent still being the bad guy? Is he well, a double himself, agent right. being the good guy? Because I've said this before, the only person that has enough sway and enough power and enough aura, more aura than the person I'm talking about to help them turn babyface is to help, excuse me, that was word vomit. I got you. To I help you, turn Roman, Roman yeah. turn babyface, the only person that can do that is The Rock. No one else has the ability to be a bigger, badder person than Roman Reigns for Roman Reigns to all of a sudden be able to turn babyface and have a mountain to climb. Let me break this down for you people out there that has children and end up watching Disney. You are talking about a Lion King scenario, my friend, where The Rock is Scar, Roman is Simba, all right? The Rock becomes are we, King. Are we Timon and Pumbaa? Yeah, we're Timon and Pumbaa. <laughs> Lion King one and a half, great movie. <laughs> all of a sudden, The Rock takes over, all right? And then Simba's gone, and then everyone's egging Roman to come back to take over and help the, the circle of life. And retain the order of Pride Rock. That's what, that's what you want. Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, that, that's I could totally see that. But I think that you know the double agent thing is where does it go? And the Rock being in champion for a year again, much more interesting than Cody being in champion for the year. Oh, uh... I'm gonna keep saying it, y'all. Y'all, you don't have to like it. You don't have to, but you're gonna have to respect it. Okay. He's over here causing messes. Uh, <laughs> for for audio listeners, and Sancho's got some plates near him, and he's all he almost. I'm I'm a streamer cave here, you know, <laughs> random trash here. But here's the thing, like I feel like you're just like Drew McIntyre. I feel like you're a hypocrite. I feel like you're a hypocrite because you're the one waving the flag of I want shorter title reigns. And then you're over here saying, oh yeah, let's give the rock the title. You know, he's going to hold that thing for another year and he's barely going to appear. So where do you land Sancho? The people want to know the people are demanding answers. Are you, mm. are you diarrhea Sancho where all you is, is just spewing the consistency of baby you're poop. Already <laughs> I've already told you who I that, I hate that line. I already told you who I am. I'm the number one LA Knight Glazer. So does LA I Knight dethrone the rock? Oh my god, imagine oh. that. Ooh. Ooh. Oh man. No, you know, you know, it'd be kind of wild. All right, uh triple Vince Russo booking. All right, LA Knight oh, beats go. the rock. But all right, you know what? We have this last man standing match. All right. Ooh. They knock each other out. The ref is at the count of nine. Lights go off. 
And then the oh, winner man. grabs the mic and says that they're the winner. But because their voices are so similar, you just don't know. You just don't know. And, and then like we just match? end it there. Cliffhanger. <laughs> like we don't match? know who walked out as champion. Yeah. And then now everyone on the internet is trying to do some uh, CIA type of voice recording and matching to see who it is. Is it The Rock? Is it LA Knight? For those that don't know, LA Knight did voiceover as The Rock because he sounds so similar to him. Yeah. That's I, terrible, is, uh, by the who, way. <laughs> who shot Mr. Burns? Yes. Classic. Oh, classic. I like that. Nice. Classic, classic Simpsons promotion. I remember that when I was a kid. The magazines, you got the Butterfingers, and you're trying to figure it out. Spoiler, it was Maggie all along. I heard, like, no one guessed Maggie. No. Not a single a baby, soul. baby, <laughs> Is it? That's the, Are that's you the same, It's the same thing. Like, hey, dude, what if Solo is the one that turns on everybody? No one gets Solo. Dude, okay, but like that Simpsons Maggie, you know, shot Mr. Burns. That actually is like the, that, I'm convinced that that was Vince in terms of that booking. Because I, I mean, yeah, any, anytime Vince, Vince is in a, in a corner and doesn't know how to book himself out of something. He's like, oh, it was Hornswoggle all along. Oh, such good shit. They're going to love this. And I feel like that was the, that was the Simpsons version of that. I mean, the Simpsons, the, the Simpsons have to have an episode about this WrestleMania 40 because this bloodline saga is never going to end. It, it truly isn't. And I don't, I don't know why people would want it because the only way it continues if, is if Roman wins or, like you mentioned, Roman is screwed out of his, of his legacy in some way. Yeah. Because we can't have – Roman cannot retire. Uh, we talked about it as a heel. He can't retire after Mania. I just don't see that. There's just too much – this is the most money they're making right now with what they have. And I don't believe that it's because of them wanting to see Cody. I think it's just because there's a genuine blurred line story that's happening now that's going to a new stratosphere that I'm not ready just to put away yet. That's all. There's just so much with, um, I, you know, calling back to that Instagram promo. There's just so much there with, and we called it, we said it first, Board of Directors Rock. That needs so to good. be a character. That needs to be pl a plot device that is used. And they were keeping that away from this narrative for a really long time until that Instagram promo, which is why you need to go watch it because that is the first instance of WWE. I guess technically not WWE, but because it was off of WWE TV, but of them using The Rock's pl uh, position in TKO as a narrative plot device with him being like, I'm your boss, dude. And I could do whatever the hell I want at any moment. I could take your championship away. I do want to see more of that. Um, I, I want to see that play out more because uh, it's been a while since we've had that um, what I call the player coach role. Somebody that's mm -hmm. in the ring, in the trenches, but also has uh, the overarching power over everyone else. I think in, in real life, the last time, what, Hulk Hogan, WCW? That's not going to work for me, brother. But that was more behind the scenes. That was that, more behind we, the we, scenes. We didn't see that. Triple H, Vince. probably the authority when he was probably. feuding with Roman Reigns. And, and Daniel Bryan. Yeah, and all that okay, kind of yeah, that's yeah. probably it. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely works. I think when it comes down to board directors rock, I, I, I want them to strip the title off of somebody. I think that would be the biggest heel thing to do, to strip the title. Kabuki I, Warriors, I, I, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah, that you're yeah, the women's tag we, champions. Just literally Thanos snap people's losing and just be like, Give all the belts to the heels and see what, what does that. Just literally take the belt from Rhea Ripley and give it to Nia Jax. Like, that would be... <laughs> you, you would go like, what is this? This is trash. This, this WD is not worth... Like, you would hate it, yeah. genuinely. And then you would start to really believe in kayfabe. Like, you would really believe that The Rock is putting his people in power because he has that power and that authority. And then you really get... I'm trying to remember... Yeah, you would get that 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 period between Infinity War and Endgame where all the Avengers are just lost and they're just depressed and bummed out. And I would love to see the faces trying to create like an underground resistance to go up against the the Rock and you know create a lot of nuance type of things to get their way. And then what's always fun and I feel like the WWE is not doing a good job with this lately is the face getting like some sort of like genuine, like like Kurt Angle showing up with the milk truck. You know what I mean? Like that kind of face overcoming the heels in a in a clever way or making them look stupid. I it's been a while since I've seen that, and I wish like Chad Gable could have done that against Gunther. Like make Imperium look stupid, and lock him in the locker room. Like you know those kind of face things. I feel that like it's what's missing these days. Versus like I'm just gonna beat you for the title 
because you disrespected me. There's there so many things that, in the Attitude Era at least, that did a lot of nuance. And that's what I loved about DX. DX would do a lot of the things that make the heels look buffoonish. And Ministry of Darkness, one of the most scariest faction of all time with the Undertaker sacrificing people, Stone Cold always made him look stupid. And same thing Stone Cold with Vince, always made him look stupid. And I think that's what's missing with why can't Cody make Roman and Rock look stupid? Because they're stupid. That's why, you know, like <laughs> Cody and Seth are doing it themselves. Uh, I, I, I just feel that I expected more from the faces this time around, and they, they let me down. I, I, it was kind of like a, hmm. Okay, but mm. what are you expecting from the match? Let's talk about that for a second, because you had jotted down here in the show notes um, that this could potentially be the, one of the most produced matches of all time, and I really want to know what you mean by that. Like, do you mean yeah. like like from point A to point B, they've choreographed every single move? Do you think that there's just going to be a lot of overbooking, a lot of interference, a, lo a lot of non-wrestling things? Maybe Solo is going to sing the national anthem in this. I don't know. Yeah, I'm very curious what you mean by this could be one of the most produced matches that you've seen. So I, I my biggest fear is that the WrestleMania is going to be eaten up by the Bloodlines entrances and the amount of extra guff that the Bloodline saga has in mind. It is going to be overbooked. There's just no other way. You're going to have... I think you cannot do the... They do a finish. We do a false finish. You, they do a finish. You cannot have that. You're going to have to have multiple interferences. You're going to have random people show up. The, the, the greatest sin that the WWE has is they overbook their biggest blow-off ending you know, buttons of a storyline. WrestleMania look 39. At, yes, look at WrestleMania 39 with the tag team uh, belts. But also look at Triple H versus Sting. Why do we need to have the NWO? Why do we need to have DX? Why do we need to have all these random moments in that fight when it should have just been against Triple H and Sting? Straight up. That's what we wanted to see. And that's what my fear is in this. When Rock and R Rock Roman versus Cody and Seth. And also, we're going to get it two nights in a row. It's going to be exhausting for the false finishes back and forth. And then the amplified false finishes for the WrestleMania 40 night too. It's going to be tough, man. It, you, you better like the bloodline storyline or you're not going to enjoy this mania. It's just, it's going to eat up 60% of whatever's going to happen. And the, the people are not going to talk about the undercard, which is going to be a shame because there's so much talent on this roster and there's so many great storylines. And the, there's two people that are getting screwed out of this WrestleMania. They're getting Bobby Lashley, like in WrestleMania 39 almost. Drew McIntyre, the man is literally having is as a main event, and this dude is doing all that he can to make it relevant with his promos and his in-ring work. Everything that Drew is doing, and I will say this to the day he is, it is done, is fantastic. And Drew is literally the man of the people right now. And Bailey, like those two are not going to get enough time to tell their story because the Bloodline Saga is just going to eat up too much time. And I think Bailey's going to get the worst end of it. And Bailey's going to get probably like a 10 minute match against EO Sky. The long, like that, that storyline has been going just as long as Bloodline almost. Honestly, almost as long. We're looking at since SummerSlam 2022 uh, yeah. when, the, when the formation of, of damage control happened. So here's the thing I am concerned that the Bloodline is going to have just too much uh, real estate at WrestleMania 40. Do I believe they deserve it? Yes, this is the biggest story in professional wrestling history. Did they deserve it last year to get night one and night two? Yeah, probably, because even back then, yeah. it was the biggest wrestling story in professional wrestling history. The difference between 39 and 40 is that the main events of night one and night two were all different people. The night one main event was still the Bloodline storyline, but it was the Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And if you look at night two, it was uh, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. Yes, everyone from that night one match got involved and it got super overbooked, but that's not the point because the highlight were six different people that were getting six different opportunities to get the shine at WrestleMania. You fast forward to this year, we're in the same boat where the Bloodline is taking night one and night two. Does it need to? Yeah, probably, because again, Biggest story going on right now, but the big difference is that now two nights are going to be suffocated by a total of only four people. The same four people. You have Roman, you have Cody, you have Rock, and you have Seth. And between those four, two are going to get two WrestleMania main events in Cody Rhodes and the in 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 um 
Roman Reigns. So there's a lot of oversaturation with the same people that are that are part of this story. While last year there was a lot there's a lot more meat, I guess, to be able to disperse the WrestleMania shine across more people in the story. That's not the case this year, which I think is the reason why it makes it sting a little bit more sting. Um, <laughs> a lot of people saying sting these days in their promos. Here we are as well. And wrestling is cool. It stings that so many people that could ha that are having WrestleMania night one main event quality feuds and have a uh, like WrestleMania night one star power uh, just are not going to get it. And if it was for a grander bloodline storyline, I get it. And this is a grander bloodline storyline, but it's the same guys that are also going to get the night two main event. That hurts a little bit. It just kind of seen that from the outside in Bailey telling an amazing story right now, probably the most grounded, most traditional professional wrestling story going on yes. right now. You betrayed yes. me. You treated me bad. Now I'm coming after you. I was your mentor. How could you do this? That's professional wrestling at its core. Oh, yeah. It doesn't need this like super extra mega powers being inserted into it. In terms of traditional wrestling story, that's the best one going on right now. Drew McIntyre probably doing the best work out of anyone in the roster right now. But the problem is, is that he's chasing somebody that's not chasing him back. He's Which chasing is weird, weird. It is weird. It feels like Drew McIntyre is this pick me champion, this pick me girl. Like, please pick me to pay attention to me. <laughs> so, you know that mean where the, you know, the girl and the guy and the girl, the guys are looking over the shoulder. Yes. So it's Seth. <laughs> that Drew That's what it feels like. And me, but Seth is, 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 is focused on something else, but doesn't realize that he's got arguably the best feud that he could ever have right, right next to him in Drew McIntyre with how good Drew McIntyre is right now. And I think it'd be overkill to call these people WrestleMania snubs because they're still on the show. They're still right. getting world title opportunities, but they're snubs in the sense that they just aren't getting the shine that they probably should be getting. And mm -hmm. there are going to be people that are just straight up snubs that just are yep. not going to have fine room in this year's WrestleMania and part of it is because of not just that the bloodline is taking up night one and night two main events, because I'm talking about people that wouldn't have been in main event positions anyway, but the fact that bloodline rock Cody Seth, just their entrances for that tag match is probably going to be 40 minutes. And I don't actually think that I'm exaggerating because a typical Roman entrance is about 10. Mm -hmm. It was about 10 minutes at WrestleMania 39. Now you multiply that by four. I think we're closing in on 30 to 40 minutes in terms of entrance time. And that mm -hmm. in itself is going to push people like maybe Andrade getting a chance at getting it on, on the WrestleMania card. Maybe this pushes Karrion Cross and Bobby Lashley off of WrestleMania again. Those are the people that I'm really going to be feeling for. You said it. I mean, the rock hits all the four ring posts. <laughs> He's going to do that. And he's going to take his time to smell everything in that Philadelphia arena. I think it's just, it, I was just, when you were talking about all the different people that are going to be snubbed, it just shows you in an alternate timeline, CM Punk doesn't get hurt. In an alternate timeline, we get Rock and Roman night two, and we get Cody versus CM Punk night one. And everything falls in line, and everybody gets the right amount of shine, in my opinion, in that card, in that alternate reality. But this is the reality that we're in. Bloodline's going to take it over. And I think it's I think it's a sign that the WWE, even though we know as fans, is a stacked roster, they're, they don't believe it's enough for a two-night WrestleMania yet. It's not there yet in their eyes because this is why they booked Bloodline two nights. It's just, it is what it is. I wish night one was just Drew and Seth. That would have been good enough. But is it good enough to sell tickets at Mania in their eyes? No. It's a shame. shame. And at some point, they're going to have to find a way to traditionally book two nights of WrestleMania because the Bloodline story isn't going to be there forever. Rock no. isn't going to be there forever. So we got to find a way to elevate the rest of storylines to feel as important as the Bloodline. And they've struggled but with that over the last two years. And we already seen already in like not not a full stump like you mentioned, but Charlotte and Rhea. Yeah. Oh my goodness. To be fair, even though the match was amazing, and actually I, I feel like we can we we can use this as a jumping off point to a couple other sure. other points. Um 
I am of the mind that Rhea versus Becky as a feud has been very weak. Very, very weak. It's getting better. It's getting better, but WrestleMania between two huge megastars, right now it's been weak. Obviously, there's still right. four weeks left. They're working on it. Yeah. They're working on it. You know what they mm-hmm. never worked on? The feud between Rhea and Charlotte. There was no feud there. They faced off. It was off- there. I, I saw you talking about it. it was there. What was the feud? They, they had history. Look no, at their no, no, yes, history. Okay. I, I, I hear you. They had yeah. history. History that you and I knew about. History sure. that history that fans knew about. But history yeah. that WWE wasn't using. They weren't. Because back saying. then, WWE just wouldn't use things that happened in the past to help tell the narrative of today. It was weird. They just refused yeah, to. I, I'm trying to remember because Rhea was just talking about she wanted to be champion. And if this was a match that was happening now, you would have the NXT footage. You would have Rhea literally dressing up as like Charlotte in a yes, mirror match. They use that, but back then they weren't. Back then they lightly mentioned it and they had one promo against each other and then the match. But then we look back on it with rose tinted glasses because the match was so damn good. It It, was good. It was incredible. One of the best women's matches that I've ever seen. Probably my favorite women's match. And it had no build. So I'm very optimistic about Rhea Becky because if they're actually trying with this feud, unlike Rhea versus Charlotte last year. Making a prediction right here. Bold prediction. The WIC bold prediction of the week. Nia and Liv get inserted into that match. I hope not. Make it a fatal four-way. Why not? That'd be so much better for them. Right now, Becky's already in a feud with Nia. Liv's already sticking her nose in the Nia and, and Becky business. And, and Rhea needs to create that level of she might not win this. And going up against those three and her in a fatal four-way will create a little bit of doubt. Okay, and I'll, that's all I'm looking for. I'll lean into that with you. But if that does happen... Rhea needs to pin Becky. I don't want any doubt. Sure. I don't want sure. any doubt after that. I think she needs to pin Give Becky. Her, well, fine. Give her Roman. Let her pin all three. I don't care. <laughs> oh, the stack pin? Oh, that'd be so <laughs> sick, zesty, though. A zesty stack pin, dude. Oh, that would and be then, s- and, then, and then you would say, who can stop Rhea? And then the music hits, and it's Jade Cargill. Oh, I thought you were going to say LA Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take anything really right like I did. Where, give them that anything. Give, give them the 24-7 championship belt. The hardcore, don't care. Don't uh, care. Resurrect the belt, the what cruiserweight belt, that purple belt. Resurrect the European champion. I don't care. Dude, what Hell you're wanting night. to do is like WWE 2K, like universe mode. Give, That's give what, him the, someone told me like there's a United States Liberty woman's belt. Give him that belt. I don't care. <laughs> like, just make it happen. And, and you talked about a snub. LA Knight will be a snub at this mania, unfortunately. How? He's he, fa- this is the biggest match of his of his career in terms of stage WrestleMania. He's gonna be he's gonna be a, a a day day one day two early card, and people are gonna sit on their hands for LA Knight because no, they're, they're gonna they're wait not. for Bloodline. LA yes, Knight they are. Will get a yes, they are. I like AJ Styles, but that's not a that's not an ex- an exciting thing between the two unless there's some kind of stakes. You need stakes between LA Knight and, and Styles. It's gonna be a cool match for sure. But why are they fighting? I don't because think that LA you Knight need. Screwed. I don't think that you need stakes. I feel like you can harken back to the old days of just two guys hating each other, and I feel like that's a bit. They're, are they're, they're going to have time to do that on TV? They've the done it line? for the past four months, dude. What are you no, talking know, about? Are they going to? Are they going to have promo time? Are they going to be in the that's ring cutting fair. a promo? No, that's no. fair. If The Rock is going to be taking forty minutes, it's going to be tough for those guys to get some screen time because otherwise, it's just going to be LA Knight running around backstage with a chair. Right. With a chair. You're right. right. That that and and, and hey. And they've already kept LA Knight and The Rock not on the same television program together on the, in the ring because, you know, LA Knight's so similar. We've already seen that. Justice for LA Knight. No, dude, no, no one is concerned about LA Knight. It's just you. They should be. They should be. You're, you're, you're wasting him. He's the DDP of this era. You're not giving him the shine. Give him the ball. Give him the ball. Dude. I want you to celebrate. Th- remember this day. If <laughs> LA Knight. I want you to celebrate. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure this LA is going to be Knight, great. If LA Knight. Follows me on Twitter. It's a greater pull than you and John Cena. Well, I think it would mean something if LA Knight follows me on you Twitter. You know what? I, I think it would. I think uh, if you. you pull that off, if you can pull off and the I'm LA Knight gonna, Twitter follow. I'm not going to harass them like you did. <laughs> I didn't like harass John, John Cena. Cena. That. I didn't. I harassed Ricky yes, Stanicki. <laughs> it's different. I swear, man. It's different. So you got to follow from Ricky Stanicki, not John Cena. Okay. That's not what Twitter says. Oh, fair enough. That's not what Twitter says. AEW Revolution. 
Did you we catch about AEW on the show? What, a what, little what bit. Is we won't we won't spend too long um, because this this is a mostly WWE podcast. But uh, a legend of the business, WWE like, Hall of Famer uh, Sting had his last match in 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 professional wrestling, and hopefully this is not a Ric Flair like retirement. I don't think that it will be. I think this is this is Sting actually genuinely saying goodbye. Um, I, I thought it was really cool what they did with his sons dressing up as past iterations of Sting. I thought that was really, really awesome. Uh, and what I will say is shout out to Tony Khan and AEW for giving Sting this send off, giving him basically an entire pay-per-view, one of AEW's biggest pay-per-views of the year, traditionally revolution and making it around Sting. I thought that was, that was really, really nice. So because WWE they, didn't do it. WWE did. And they probably wouldn't have done it either because they, nope. de- it, the thing is, is that WWE doesn't tend to give these types of send offs to people that aren't their boys, their people, their homegrown talent, um, which is why I truly do believe as much uh, clownery as people give him. Tony Khan is just a fan, dude. He is just a fan with a lot of money that happens to have a professional wrestling company because this is what a fan would do. This is a this is this is this is a fan led retirement for Sting. And I don't Mm -hmm. think that Sting could have gotten this anywhere else aside from maybe TNA, but TNA these days is run by people that Sting just doesn't recognize because he left that company so long ago and it's changed hands so many times. I think the only person that could have given him this, this send off was Tony Khan. You can't, you can't discredit the young bucks as well, being a part of it, that they were a big role in the EVP of letting that happen. I I think the good thing is they let Sting know like, Hey, how do you want to go out brother? You know? What's your idea? What's your way you want to end your career? Not a lot of wrestlers get that. Not a lot of wrestlers have the ability to go out with their family, go out walking, go, you know, in, in a sense of having everything together, considering that Sting has wrestled a very aggressive style at AEW. I don't know if that shortened his career. I don't think that's the reason why he's retiring. I think Sting could definitely go longer. But I think it's just time. You you know, you know, they always say you feel it naturally. And I have to give it to them uh, for doing it the right way. They kind of, that was like kind of my reason for the jumping off point of will it be overproduced? I did watch the match as much as I can. I And I think when people ask me why I don't watch AEW, the $60 for a pay-per-view is pretty tough. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty, that's a pretty tough bargain to go for considering even, for example, WWE, if WWE did not have their peacocks or their, their network and all that kind of stuff in the past i wouldn't i wouldn't buy every p ple yeah you'd you'd pay-per-view. think twice about payback you would you'd think you would twice think, about fast right. lane you would think twice about chamber as well you know there's some things you'd be like because mm, i always bought the big four no matter what so when it comes to AEW, this the idea of buying into a program that has limited buildup it's hard for me to go, I'm in. Even on a Sting retirement match, because I know that I'll eventually, with the power of the internet, I'm going to see the match eventually. And it's not a moment for me to be there. Um, but in regards to the match itself, I was like, yeah, this is going to be one of those things like, all right, the Suns are involved, and Sting gets, uh, Sting no sells a bunch of things, Sting has a lot of, of fun moments, and then, you know, the, the finish happens. And it just shows you that it's very difficult to to land something that monumentous in wrestling. And so that's why I was worried about, I don't know how they can do it with Bloodline. But it was cool, man. I like Sting. We said on this podcast, he's he's he would be on Mount Rushmore if things went differently for him. I think like if you, if you remove the fact that a lot of people have this mentality that you have to be WWE to be on Mount Rushmore which I get to some degree, right? Can you, can you be the greatest baseball player of all time? If you didn't play in the MLB, can you be the greatest basketball player of all time? If you didn't play in the NBA, I get that argument. If we completely like remove that as a baseline for people's um, thoughts, I think you can make a really strong argument for Sting being a a Mount Rushmore wrestler Mm -hmm. in the history of professional wrestling. I think you absolutely can. I think it's there. Um, I actually think, like the fact that he's been in so many places and been an iconic name in so many places. I think that actually like works Gump. for him. Dude, he that's actually a hilarious way to put it. The Forrest Gump of wrestling. He's literally done it all, been everywhere, saw the downfall of WCW and the <laughs> rise, was in WWE, 
touched the WWE Hall of Fame. TNA, TNA Hall of Famer didn't even know they had that, but you know, the Forrest Gump of WWE is in of, of wrestling is in there. And now AEW, like, dude, he's literally done it all. It's such an impressive career, all <laughs> with no drama, no scandals, which, you know, nowadays in professional wrestling, it seems really hard to be able to right off into the sunset with have it without having something bad come out about you especially you know in recent memory as of the making of this podcast um so i think sting is just such a great representation of how to have a clean professional wrestling career injuries yeah it was a part of it it was they were there but it's wrestling it's wrestling but i feel like something that that sting always had even in his more advanced age is he always seemed to have his brain intact I feel like a lot of people that get that deep into their careers, there's just something a little bit off, you know, and understandably so, taking so many bumps for so many years. But Sting was just always there, and he just always seemed so uh, in the moment, in the present, regardless of how old he was getting. He's always been the the anti... He's like, I don't know, man. He's like that the, the person you see across the pond, you know, the what if... He's always the biggest what if in wrestling. Like, what if he was just he came over with all the other like, WCW guys? What what, what could have been? Because you know, when WCW came over to the WWE, it was like Booker T. Like, yeah, Booker T's Buff good. Bagwell. Booker T's was champion. Buff Bagwell, you're like, all right. Scott Steiner, you're like, ah, all right, you know. But it wasn't Sting. It, if Goldberg was here, it's like, yeah, but it's not Sting. NWO was in WWE, yeah. It's not Sting. Yeah, but the NWO man. needs Sting. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what the, the without Sting, there is no NWO. Because NWO were starting if if you did not know them the Monday Night Roar Wars, NWO was running rough shot over everybody and they were just <laughs> destroying everything. And there were there was no stories from it was just NWO just destroying it and, until Sting showed up in that black and like, in that black outfit and that white face paint. Well, it's the whole, Sting! Scott Hall's idea. Hey, brother, why don't you just look yourself like the crow? Uh, you know, it's kind of crazy how every wrestler, you talked about those podcasts, like every wrestler is like taking credit for something. There's something. always like somebody something. like, yeah, yeah, I, I told him, dude, I told him he should have done that finisher or Stone Cold talking about, I, oh, yeah, Michael Hayes told me I should add a kick to the stunner. You know, there's always those random. That's what I like those podcasts for. Those random little stories. I mean, maybe one day, you know, we'll, we'll be giving... <laughs> suggestions oh yeah you know uh, yeah i remember when la knight got screwed out of him getting any titles brother you know that that that, that word that la knight said he used to say yes but you know um after talking to him i was like brother why don't you just change that to <laughs> yeah <laughs> much more casual man <laughs> Oh, Out there in the Silver Dome, brother. In the Silver Dome. Oh, that's not going to work for, for me, brother. All right. Let's start to wrap things up. Cool segment of the week. I'll go first. Sure. Signs. Signs seem to be yes. coming back in WWE. Yes, I dude. noticed that. Yes. Dude, every show I'm seeing more and more signs. And I'm just going to say, I think it started when the Santi Zap sign appeared on, oh, on God, screen. And then all of a Here sudden, people started bringing signs, realizing, Here oh, my go. goodness. I, I give credit to Wheezy Blonde, but go ahead. No, I, I was, no, no, we don't, I don't know who that is. Wheezy Blonde was in the biggest segment of the year. Okay. All right. The, it was who, front and center. I, okay, I get it. I know. She's got that over me. She does have that over me. Shout out to Wheezy Blonde, friend of the show. Uh, signs are back. And I love it. I, I mean, I would hate to be someone in the arena and oh, it's be <laughs> behind somebody with a sign. That's annoying. always the worst, um, which is why I always thought that the best viewing experience actually is at home. But I digress. Different conversation for a different day. Um, I think it goes along with The Rock's narrative that wrestling feels cool, that wrestling is back, that wrestling is cool, that people are bringing signs. People are... Cause it's a hassle to bring a sign, dude. It's annoying to, you know, if, especially if you're in public transportation, trying to bring that thing to the show, but wrestling is so cool and so over right now that people are willing to bring a high mom sign, mom, it's me or whatever it is. And it just looks, it just adds to the aesthetic of the moment. Mm -hmm. Like when the rock was in the ring about to talk for the first time and you see all those signs. I, I personally did like the die Rocky die sign. Clearly Fox did yeah. not. Cause they kept uh, censoring the American, the American broadcast. Not for me. I got I thought, that annoyed me. That ruined my clips. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, signs are back. And I think it's uh, one of the things, what I will say, Sancho, is yes. 
I, I think I can make the argument that this is currently the best era of professional wrestling based on match quality, based on the safety of wrestlers, the, the fact that wrestlers have so many great options, women's wrestling, how good the storylines and matches are. But one of the things that is objectively so much better about the Attitude Era is the, is the fans, fa fan pops and fan aesthetics with like signs from head to toe, the flash of the old school of the old school cameras. Maybe it's starting to come around to this era of professional wrestling as well, where the fans are not just going to be a prop to sit there in attendance and ooh and ah, where they can actually now be, I don't know, more involved with the show with, with chance fan interactions with this, with the signs. I think it's a, it's, it's a showing that, that yes, wrestling is cool. And now it's starting to be, there's a visual manifestation of that with the fans right now in attendance. Oh, for sure. And it's not, it's not WWE generated. It's not WWE handing out those little flyers. Yes. It says Cesaro section. Yes. Or Rusev day. It's not that kind of thing. It's, it's actual fans bringing my favorite are the, the letter cut out signs. That yeah. Says like those are, those are so fun. And I noticed that too, when I was uh, reacting to the shows, I was like, especially on SmackDown, I was like, there's a lot of signs here today. And that's different because if, if you go back to the SmackDown, there is like wall to wall signs everywhere and just random signs. And you could see what I like about a sign. And if you're planning to bring one is what I like about it is it just shows you where your the temperature is for you, who you're rooting for or what storyline you like. And I think the WWE uses signs to say, oh, this phrase is getting over. This angle is getting over. This wrestler is getting over. So totally, if you're going to go to any of these events, take a sign because it's a way to voice your your opinions and where you're at with the show without screaming your head off and getting drowned out. And, I, you know, it's it's hard to take a sign because it, it could get taken away from you at the gate. 100%. And you could, you could get someone that does not know anything about the rules either and take your sign away and it would suck. But again, it's not wrestling is great. It's wrestling is cool, okay? Is cool. Bring that sign, Russ. And, there and there it, better be you, some wrestling is cool signs now that The Rock is saying it. Be. There has to be. And, like, we already paid The Rock. I mean, he <laughs> said he messed up a little bit. He said pro wrestling was cool. And we're like, ah. Ah, so close. Do it again, can man. We, can we get our money back in any way? And Seth said it, too. And I was like, ah, you're, it's, it's wrestling is cool. Not pro wrestling is cool. And then, uh, and then I go, Santi, can we just change this to pro wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did ping me for that. You know, you mentioned uh, fan signs being kind of like a temperature of how the fan is feeling and what mm -hmm. their thoughts are and being able to voice that. Uh, there are stories uh, from The Rock himself in the Attitude Era where he would say a catchphrase just to see if it'll land. And then the next week when he's doing his entrance, he's looking for signs of that catchphrase to see if, okay, is this resonating with fans? Oh, I see signs of it's cooking. All right, maybe I should keep saying what The Rock is cooking. Uh, so I don't think that's so much the case these days because fan uh, fan signs haven't really been part of the, of the wrestling lexicon really for a very, very long time. But, you know, wrestlers look at these signs, dude. So... Come in and voice your opinion. You know who else is looking at these signs? Sancho and Santi. Wrestling is cool signs. Please bring them. Bring them. Bring it. Sancho, I'll pass it. Yes. I'll pass the buck over to you. What was cool? What I, I think is, is definitely cool is I'm going to keep harping this as much as possible is the, the production is cool. I made a video about this, but week in and week out, it's getting better. They, they're using establishing shots of the city more like a basketball broadcast. Like they show the river walk. And I was like, what am I watching? The NBA? Um, I think my wrestling is cool thing is Pat McAfee. And he is part of that production power. The fun that McAfee is having is adding to the fun for Michael Cole and is making Michael Cole much more relaxed and giving freedom to Michael Cole. And yes, Pat McAfee is very polarizing as a commentator. I think some people despise him. Some people love him. I'm the one that loves him because he adds something to every single wrestler. If you are a Gunther, he is saluting you and he is making you part of the he's making it part of the storyline for you. If you're a Nakamura, he's doing the, you're, he's dancing to your theme to add a little bit of pop to you. If you're Jay, he's putting over your silly <laughs> arm thing, right? There's so many things that is doing it. Like if you're Dom, he's calling you Doofus Dom. It's just the little things that he's adding to each match, which makes it much more organic to me. It doesn't feel like 
He's reading from a script. Oftentimes, if you're really paying attention to when he's calling the match, he's looking at the match. He's not looking down at a piece of paper. He is looking in the ring and just feeding off of that. And that chaotic energy I could relate to when I cast as well. Uh, it's more of the style that I embrace as an esports caster is I try to in, embrace a wrestling style commentary. And I thoroughly enjoyed saying things like, because uh, Fortnite has icon skins, and I always go, it's the icon! They're here! They're defending Tilted Towers! Like, that kind of stuff all the time. I brought that gravitas to the to the show. And I have to give kudos to Pat McAfee, because he is doing lots of things that will will be... I think the, the reason why people don't like Pat McAfee is that a part of it is, is he... Are we a stepping stone to whatever he wants to do, Right? Are we just a layover until his next thing? Like until he goes, all right, I, I got what I wanted out of WWE. He's already done that before where he got the WWE promotion. Then he went off to ESPN to do college game day. And then he comes back like, are we just a temporary thing for him? Or he's going to be here as a lifer? I don't know. I don't enjoy him in the ring. Uh, uh, you know, it was a good pop to see him. And especially against Adam Cole, that, that was fine. But I think Pat McAfee, if he stays... As just as long as Michael Cole, he would go down as one of the greats. Yeah, man. I, I, he just brings this, um, almost slightly ignorant fan angle to commentary because you can tell, you know, yeah, okay, he doesn't know all of these like nuanced moves, and he he's not the great play by play guy, but he just sort of is pointing out the things that a lot of people at home are seeing. And, yep. and playing into uh, into characters like and, and helping within the context and the relationship of of wrestler and commentator protecting the kayfabe and protecting the character of the wrestler like Gunther, the saluting, helping put over that aura of Gunther that like, oh, I like I I'm right next to him and I feel like I need to salute him. And right. playing into, um, like you said, the, the doofus Dom, like people hating Dom. All right. Now we. We as fans have a voice on the commentary team reflecting the things that and we're thinking as well. And it's not a heel commentator. No. It's not, it's not like um, the Jesse Ventura or the Bobby the Brain. It's, he's not there to vouch. He goes, he sometimes, he's like rooting for Gunther just because he doesn't want to get beaten up in the back. That's hilarious. funny to me. Yeah. It's hilarious. And then he's, and he's like going like, hey, I asked damage control between the break. Well, who are you going to pick? Why are you here? And they don't talk to me. They're mean, mean to me. <laughs> like, that's, the kind of, like, that's the kind of stuff. By the way, damage control looks so cool on the commentary's desk. I was like, yeah. dude, that's kind of, kind of, I like that vibe where they're just like hanging around like, like street kid punks. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of vibe with that. I kind of vibe with them now. You, you like them? Uh, you like Dakota Kaiser mouthpiece? I kind of do. Yeah, it Dakota kinda, Kaiser, great it, mouthpiece. It makes them like a... A little bit edgier, a little bit more like brattier as well. Like, eh, you guys are stupid type of thing. We're just here to be cool. And I'm all about that. <laughs> you think Jade Cargill destroys them all? I think she does. I, I mean, we had that interaction between Jade and, and Eo. Multiple times. Yeah, yeah. So And on, on, on socials too. I think she she comes in for the save on Bailey. I think that's her that's her saving the cat scenario. That's her helping Bailey win moment. I you think, you think, think, think that's her WrestleMania moment without I think uh, so. putting, putting Jade Cargill in a situation where she has to carry a match or be in a match. She just makes Obviously, a save and a, makes a, you know, a three, five minute appearance where she, you know, isn't and, having and, a full 20 minute match. And does like, um, like a, like a double fireman's carry on two wrestlers. And I mean, she could easily do that with, Oh yeah. Both uh, Kabuki words same, probably. Honestly. Right. Easy. Like even with maybe all three, who knows? But literally, I think this is probably for another podcast. As I'm not concerned about Jade, but there's a reason why they're hiding her so has to be for, has for like to over be. a year. And it, and it could be are they just shaking off all the AEW? Not not gonna. <laughs> You're I don't making know. it sound like it's a disease. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Maybe she picked up bad habits. Sure. Which is which happens if you're so green, you get thrown into that TV. You know, a lot of the talent that you see now in, in WWE, they worked a long time in NXT. And I think they just don't want to put her in NXT. I think they wish they could, but we talked about yeah, this they as can't. well, that you, you can't they're put in AEW. You can't do it. So I think they're taking their time as much as possible with her. And I think what would be a great place for her to to land after Mania would be to save Bailey and maybe have Bailey be her mouthpiece. Or 
once all bloodline things over, Paul Heyman takes over and be their mouthpiece. Oh, that'd be oh, oh man, Paul Heyman and Jade Cargill. That'd the be nasty. Ru- that'd be the nasty. Sancho booking There's is on been, fire today, Santi. Yeah, Sancho Russo right here, just cooking, <sighs> cooking. Uh, oh, for three. All right, Sancho, that was a fun episode, man. Oh, uh, you cut you cut me off as soon as I'm cooking. You're like, bam, episode's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm out of here. Having the, uh, I mean, the I match of a lifetime. Yeah, dude. I can't I mean, have you. Be, everywhere. I can't put you over that much. You know, we have to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're the only people listening this far are the people that already know that Sancho's the Sancho hidden maniacs. gem. The, the Sancho, Sancho maniacs, maniacs are the ones watching still. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much to everybody for listening to this episode of Wrestling Is Cool. Uh, wherever it is that you might be listening, YouTube, audio services, Patreon, just make sure to give this a like. It lets us know that you're enjoying this and it helps push this into whatever algorithms that are out there, the algorithm gods. Um, but if you watch on YouTube, come check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Santi Zap. Come check out everything that Sancho is doing. And speaking of which, Sancho, what do you want to tell the people about that you're working on this week? Uh, once again, uh, uh, please follow the Sancho Ores wrestling TikTok. But if you're not a TikTok person, which I understand, follow me on Instagram because that's where I put more of my video essays about what the the past, about Titan Trons, about all these kinds of things and little short, uh, short things. But what I'm really working on is I want to continue doing the Patreon gaming side of things with WWE 2K24 coming out. Santi and I are definitely want to do exclusive content for you where we do like brand versus brand or we do like silly scenarios and all those kinds of things. I think we definitely want to build that out and we would like your help in terms of what kind of 2K content you have. So comment down below for that and we'll, we'll definitely do that. I don't know if we'll ever hit public, public um, you know, socials, but I think the Patreon people who have been enjoying the gaming side of wrestling uh, would be very are very excited about it and we would like you to join Patreon. Five bucks. My much is all we're asking, and it goes a long way. Or more, if you've got more, and you want to it, get more. You know, Santi's the kind of guy's like, <laughs> oh, you have five, one out of 20. You got a 20 in there. <laughs> I'm more of like, I'm happy with the dollar, okay? Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Take care. Be wonderful people. Hey, folks, hopefully you enjoyed that episode of Wrestling is School. A special extra thank you goes out to our Patreon producers at the $15 tier who are making this show possible with their contribution. So special thank you goes out to 2022 Benjamin, Abel Rodriguez, Ben Calloway, Blake, Buxo, CB, Chris the Postman, Cody Cook, Connor Williamson, Isatch, Gavin Alves, Ileana, Lil Shifu, Lucas Wittenhagen, Malik Graham, Monte Moore, Nicholas Kyle, Ollie, Owen Miller, Papaya King, Reese Dowd, Ricardo Huez, Robert Dalton, Rodolfo Reyes, Ryan Yelovic, Stucky, Super Malachi Galaxy, Tom Lehman, Two Crown, Wesley Simpson, Whip One, Xavier Izquierdo, Yellow Wonton, York, Zapola, and Zerg Zito. Thank you all so much for making wrestling as cool what it is today. Appreciate you. Take care, everybody.